It's another snowy morning coming up more live reports from our three reporters who are braving the snowy conditions from Anaconda to Big Sky to Bozeman. And there's a new push by Democratic leaders to get Steve Bullock to challenge Steve Daines for Senate in Montana. Just ahead, find out who is leading that current push. We're coming up to 6.30, so delighted you could join us on this Friday. Matt Elwell and Donna Kelly and our live reporters out in the field, and we're going to check in with them. No, we are. I think our current push right now is our snow shovels on our driveways because well, we're seeing some pretty steady snow across the area. Snow covered on Bozeman Pass. Visibility doesn't look great, but it looks like it has improved. Homestake Pass visibility is pretty good, and patchy snow and ice down the Gallatin Canyon. Uh, rut covered uh, snow down the canyon, but the plows are out trying to work hard to to get it uh, drivable. It's certainly drivable, but it's going to be a slow go. Manita Pass snow covered, Reynolds Pass snow covered, and uh, it looks like Norris Hill visibility is down at the moment uh, with some snow blowing across the road. Of course, uh, the temperatures are expected to be below freezing for the morning. That means uh, snow and ice are big concerns as well as visibility. I expect the snow to let up much like yesterday through the later part of the morning and early afternoon another surge of snow moving toward the evening. It's not going to be snow all the way across the board, but this morning our own uh, team of, uh, of reporters are out mm -hmm. covering the snow. The skiers are over the moon <laughs> and our Cody Boyer has been tromping through very deep snow and joins us with a live report from Big Sky this morning. Cody. That's exactly right. In more ways than one, Donna, when you're taking a look at something like this. Now, I know I'm standing in a ditch, but this is just an example, and I wanted to show you this, too. On the way here, both sides of the road coming up through the canyon all the way to Big Sky, if you were to go off of the road, this is what you'd basically land in with your car, truck, anything. And even if you have four-wheel drive with the density of the snow, it's powder on the top, but pretty thick on the last foot down. Once again, it's up to my waist here, but I'm I'm standing on a pretty good base of packed snow, so I'm not even touching the solid ground. So if you were to get down in here, it would be a pretty good hike to get out. So at the same time of being safe on the roads, it's good to have a kit or other things like that. According to many Gallatin County Sheriff's deputies and, and so on, they would encourage to be prepared at all times, especially with the cell service in the canyon. On my way here, there was lot, there were lots of slick conditions. There were ruts in the snow, which made it hard for maybe lower base vehicles to try to plow their way through. There were a lot of plows out too. So at the same time, one other thing I noticed that I want to point out is if you try to pass a plow, that's almost, that's well, it's a bad idea. If you're going down those tight corners in the canyon, I saw one gentleman or one driver try to get around that plow and there was another person on the way over. They actually had to take a turnout to get around him. So with you, when you can't see the lanes, it's probably the safest option to just stay behind the plow and not end up in a place like where I'm standing now. So we'll keep, while the skiers are indeed rejoicing up here, there's a lot of lines going up towards the resort. It's better safe than sorry getting there. So I'll toss things back to you guys. I know that Chet's in downtown Bozeman right now in terms of looking at the conditions down there. I was there yesterday and he made fun that I wasn't having, I didn't have a cup of coffee. I had two so far. So I hope he had some down there and I'll toss it back in his direction to check on those conditions. Chet. Oh, Cody, I've been sipping on my coffee down here. I just had a, a visitor to our area walk by me here a few minutes ago. Uh, she's walking in downtown and she used the word magical. It's those big snowflakes falling straight down. It's just exactly what you would expect for Christmas stroll. I'll remind you it's a week before Valentine's. Calendar apparently doesn't seem to care about any of that. Uh, it is slick. The crews are out working. Uh, the plows are doing Main Street. The graders are taking the side streets. In fact, there's a pretty good chance I'll be parked right where I'm at now until, uh, oh, maybe St. Patrick's Day. The grader did a good job. Got right up next to the uh, vehicle, and it's uh, completely covered in. But that's what they're here to do. Um, I. I'll take the price for all of that. So the crews are working on it. It is slick, as Cody mentioned. The snow that is falling is light and fluffy. That means visibility. You get behind one of those snow plows, like Cody said, or you get behind another vehicle, it's going to kick up that light, fluffy snow, and it's going to make it hard for you to see. All of those things being true, 
take it slow, give yourself some extra time. It's not too bad here in downtown Bozeman right now. Temperature across the street saying 30 degrees, light snow falling straight down. Again, Chet Lehman live in downtown Bozeman. Our own John Amy has been roaming around Deer Lodge County. He's in somewhere in Anaconda. John, what's happening over where you are? Hey, not too bad, Chet. I haven't gotten lost. I think I'm, I'm, I'm out here at the rest stop near uh, the smelter city of Anaconda and right by Interstate 90. Just checking out the conditions here. And right now, it's pretty pleasant. Uh, the, there's just light snowfall. The plows are out on the street. I see them coming off the interstate, circling around here, going into Anaconda, keeping the, the main roads clear. So at this point in time, looks pretty safe for motorists, uh, but there is snow on the ground. It is cold. Last I checked, it's about, we're looking at about, you know, we're about 23 degrees out here. So it's chilly. Um, there's definitely a lot of slushy snow on the road, so be, you know, take it slow when you're going to work this morning. But at this point in time, uh, not a whole lot of snow since uh, I've been out here at five o'clock this morning. Uh, so driving conditions look pretty well, and and it's good to see that the uh, snow plows are out there working hard. Um, looking pretty good at this point in time out near the Smelter City. Back to you, Donna. All right, John, Chet. And Cody, thanks very much, gentlemen. 35 minutes after the hour, the dollars are adding up on the Montana campaign trail. Less than four months from now, two Democrats will go face to face for their party's nomination for governor. MTN's Jay Cohn brings us a closer look at the races behind the scenes where the money hits the road. We all need to do Whitney Williams burst onto the Montana political scene this fall when she announced her bid for governor. While she's a new face, her family ties run deep in Montana politics. Father Pat Williams represented Montana in the U.S. House for nearly two decades. And her mom, Carol, served in the state legislature for eight years and has the honor of becoming the state's first female Senate majority leader. So it's really no surprise that Whitney's raking in the cash for her bid at the governor's chair. Over the last three months of 2019, the Williams campaign raised $439,000, with donations coming in from 29 states. Nearly three-fourths of her total, though, comes from outside Montana, $107,000 from California, $87,000 from Washington State. Her Montana donations totaled $104,000. By comparison, Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney had raised 451000 by year's end, about 80% of that from Montana donors. While his donations have come in from 44 states, no other state really stands out. His California donations total 17000 accounting for just 4% of his campaign cash. Of the 451000 Cooney has raised so far, he's spent 273000 and begins 2020 with $178,500 cash on hand. For Williams, of her $439,000 total, she has spent $186,000 and starts 2020 with $253,000 cash on hand. So it appears both Williams and Cooney are well positioned for the push ahead towards the June 2nd primary. The big question now is which candidate can create traction with the voters. The next campaign finance reports are due out March 20th. We'll keep you posted on how the fundraising battle shapes up. In Billings, Jay Cohn reporting for MTN News. Both Democratic governor hopefuls will be in Billings next Wednesday night for their first debate. MSUB's Petro Theater is the site for the event, and MTN's Russ Riesinger will be one of the panelists. The 90-minute forum begins at 6 p.m. and is open to the public. Democrats do not seem to be giving up on trying to persuade the man who currently holds the office of governor in Montana to make a run for the Senate, and that apparently includes former President Barack Obama. Politico reports that Obama met privately with Governor Steve Bullock yesterday in Washington, D.C., where Governor Bullock is in town for the National Governors Association winter meeting. According to the report, Bullock is still undeterred. The filing deadline for the race is March 9th. Many Democrats believe that Bullock would be the best bet for beating incumbent Republican Senator Steve Daines, who is seeking a second term. Just ahead, the doctor who was the first to warn about the coronavirus dies from it. The latest infections and what else is being impacted from the disease. 
And here's what's coming up on CBS This Morning. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, we talk with an American on board a quarantine cruise ship with more than 60 passengers infected with coronavirus. Plus, a CBS News investigation finds thousands of tons of dangerous coal ash being moved into the mainland U.S., how it's linked to cancer and other illnesses. And meet an inspiring group of police department employees who have lost thousands of pounds as part of a unique wellness program. And they got a big surprise from Oprah. We'll see you at 7.